This is the Tiergarten in Berlin. Hard to believe that this is in the centre of one of the largest cities in Europe. Well, I say the centre. It's a bit difficult to say the centre in Berlin, sort of two centres. It's still divided by east and west. Uh, despite the wall having come down all those years ago, 34 years ago, third of a century ago. Uh, but uh, there's still a very much uh, it's a, still very much a divided city, uh, but when you walk around it. In the Tiergarten, uh, this is the location of the murder of Karl Liebknecht. I'll show you the uh, location to, little in a few minutes. And uh, uh, Karl Liebknecht was a member of the SPD, the sort of the liberal, uh, well, sort of moderate socialist uh, party. And uh, in Germany, workers got rights to form unions in the 1890s. Lots of social care was introduced, even by Bismarck, of all people. And um, indeed, Germany was, alongside the United Kingdom and New Zealand, uh, leading lights in uh, social welfare change. However, uh, the war, First World War, spoiled a lot of things for a lot of people. Um, uh, Liebknecht was locked up twice. Uh, first time he had, was a famous trial in 1907, I think it was. Uh, he published a pacifist uh, booklet, and uh, uh, this uh, came. Uh, it was a very famous trial. Even uh, the Kaiser had a copy of uh, the booklet, and he kept a keen interest in the trial. There's one thing that stands out in my mind from this trial was uh, something that Liebnick said in his defence about a, um, a general who stated that uh, what is better um, is, uh, oh, it's better, sorry, it's better to have a soldier who has, who can, shoots badly but uh, loves the Kaiser rather than somebody who's a crack shot who has dubious political ideologies. And uh, this was uh, part of what he put forward that the mili militarism was the enemy. Now he was opposed to the First World War. The SPD, although theoretically one might have thought it might have been against the war, it didn't. I mean, when the war started, there was this wave of enthusiasm for it, which even the the party of the workers. Uh, was taken in by. Um, uh, Liebnick was against the war. He was locked up in uh, 1916. He was kicked out of the SPD and the SPD claimed that he was he had psychological or psychiatric uh, problems. Uh, when the war ended, or just before the war ended, in October of 1918, Liebnicht, uh, who was in prison, he was released. There was a general amnesty, and the idea of this was that the, 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 the government thought that this might uh, pacify people a little bit. Well, it didn't. Uh, it just made things, if anything, worse. Two weeks later, on the 9th of November of uh, 1918, Gustav Stresemann uh, proclaimed the German Republic. The Kaiser fled to the Netherlands and a very short while afterwards, maybe a couple of hours afterwards, Liebnik declared a socialist republic. Now, uh, this former party uh, was in power. Uh, there was uh, an uprising and Liebnik tried to uh, overthrow the SPD government, the, the new government of Germany, but uh, to introduce a Soviet-style government. At the same time, he formed the Communist Party, one of the founders of the Communist Party. Uh, this revolt is called the Spartacist Uprising. It was put down, uh, and it, it, it was a lot, loss of life, obviously, and um, Liebknecht and his partner, Rosa Luxemburg, had to go underground. And uh, so first of all, they were hiding in Neukölln, and then they went to Wilmersdorf. At Wilmersdorf, I think it was the first night they were there, 
and a citizens committee came round. Uh, it wasn't. It was clearly targeted. It wasn't. Somebody betrayed them. Obviously, it wasn't a random search. Asked for them. The landlord said they weren't there. They they searched anyway. Found them. They were arrested. Another person who was there hiding with them was Wilhelm Pieck, later to be the uh, head of the uh, East Germany, dictator of East Germany, effective dictator of East Germany. Um, Liebknecht was taken to uh, a, a military place and the person in charge, or in, effectively in charge, he was the, the general had just been appointed to be in charge but he was absent. The person in charge at that moment was one Valdemar Pabst and Valdemar Pabst got a hold of the uh, defence minister Noska and he said that uh, Liebknecht was there with him. What should he do with him? Um, Noska, probably not wanting to take responsibility, suggested that um, perhaps get a hold of uh, his commanding officer and uh, perhaps said that wasn't possible. And then allegedly uh, Noska said something along the lines of, well then you know what to do. Um, not at all clear. Um, anyway, so a uh, Liebknecht was taken out, the uh, HQ was in a hotel, uh, he was even got abused a little bit by people in the hotel, uh, there was a soldier in the car he was put into, he even hit him twice with the rifle butt, uh, causing, causing him to bleed, and he was brought to a location, right? it was a location where they pretended the car had broken down and they said they'd have to walk the rest of the way. I don't know if the walking the rest of the way was the route which I just walked down, but it could have been because there was a path there. I don't know if that path has been there for the past 104 years. Who knows? Anyway, so they said they'd have to walk the rest of the way. Um, Liebknecht was brought to this place in front of me now and there he was shot four times. His body was then taken to a place where bodies were collected and it was said that they didn't give a name for him. He was identified. At the same time his partner Rosa Luxemburg was also uh, murdered and her body was dumped in the Landwehr Canal and that was found four months or more than four months later, 31st of May 1919. Very close to here where her body was actually dumped, it's only a few hundred meters. And this uh, was put up in 1987 as a memorial to her or to them yeah. And I think that wall there also represents that. Now, one thing I need to point out is this, is that, okay, they formed the Communist Party and now we know what Communists did. So we have the benefit of hindsight. We also know what the Nazis did. So we have the benefit of that hindsight as well. Um, at the time, uh, given the fact that this dreadful war had been caused by militarism and uh, nationalism, tribalism, would it not be right, therefore, uh, to get rid of these uh, ide ideas and instead to advance to a state where people had better social care, there was hospitals, there was uh, um, help for the unemployed, a better economy for everyone. Doesn't that make more sense? Uh, now, of course, we now know that communism doesn't give those things. Uh, it just makes things really difficult for people. Uh, but hard to say. I mean, had the communists come to power in Germany, as, as lots of people think could have happened, I, I, I don't think with some personal things, I think it's highly unlikely. But then again, if somebody would asked me in uh, at the same time uh, if 
uh, the Soviets would stay in power in Russia? I'd have said probably not. No, I don't think so. Lenin didn't think so either because he kept the pact back all the time, where, ready to make uh, his way out of there. Anyway, I shall do a longer account of the life and death of Karl Liebknecht, should you be interested. And uh, I'll, if, you, if you subscribe, then you'll know when I upload it. And obviously I've just done this off the top of my head, so there may be one or two uh, uh, mistakes in it. But if there are, I'll put them in the uh, uh, comment section below and I'll pin it. Um, so, I'm now in Berlin. I've done lots of videos from here. My specialization is in the Nazi and Communist periods, and in particular in the Holocaust of Europe, that sort of thing. Then, you can, if you subscribe, I upload every Friday at 20 hundred hours uh, Central European time, and occasionally upload at other times as well. So, uh, for the moment, thanks very much for watching, and all the best from me in Berlin.